relative energy activates constant elevation. Three, two, one. What is up, everybody? You are listening. You are watching to the Constant Elevation Podcast. I am your host, Gabe Rock. Hope you guys are doing this uh, almost mid. No, it's so early. It's not midpoint of April yet. I think technically, like next week is be mid April. It's been really uh, rainy here lately in Maryland, um, to the point where Benjamin's like uh, soccer practices have been canceled, and so uh, which makes it a little bit easier for us to run our errands and do our things. Um, but uh, yeah, looking forward to coming up this weekend because so. Uh, update i still have an assignment to langley it's actually held on for this long granted we're at the two-week point now so i still don't necessarily believe it but things are pointing excuse me in the right direction i did get my initial assignment rip and all that jazz so actually official paperwork is flowing in that direction so the wife and i are heading down there um this sunday we're going to be there for a few days doing some house hunting um in a local area just kind of get her acclimated this is actually probably the shortest pcs we've ever done it's only like three or three and a half hours away from here crofton to i think um newport news or i think newport news or hampton is where we're eventually looking at so we're driving down there going to check out some house hunting and then also um, check out the base all that jazz and then on one of the days i'm actually going to stop into my projected new office just to meet the team and uh, see i'm not doing any work but i'm just going to go meet them put eyes on um, looking forward to that kind of next chapter and then um, finished up my assignment preferences for the command selection board and so i turned those in we'll see what goes at this point in time they, they could just take my preferences like oh noted and just throw it in the trash because they have other priorities they have to fill i get it especially as low uh low man on the totem pole and so we'll see how that pans out i'll let you guys know in august um we're, by that point we'll be in virginia anyway so lots of good stuff here um did find out also that I got the results back from the CrossFit Open. I did see that I earned a level six for the 40 to 44 um, age group in the males and then level five for individual competition. So sounds about right. I was, I, I've never considered myself a, not even an above average CrossFitter. I actually think I'm a average CrossFitter. I think the numbers um, uh, reflect that. And so uh, I, my, my passion has changed to coaching anyway. And so like, I really just want to kind of focus in on that. See, hopefully in Virginia, I have some other opportunities as well. So if you have any, if you know of any CrossFit gyms in Virginia, please hit me up and I would love to try and get in contact with them and then maybe find another coaching opportunity there. So, but uh, speaking of moving on this week's episode, I wanted to talk about uh, mentorship and a different kind of um, I saw uh, one quote, it said, uh, a good mentor hopes you move on, but a great mentor knows you will. And I figured that quote was enough. Usually that's enough for me to kind of get the to get the the gears turning and me thinking about what I want to talk about as far as here, constant, ele constant elevation. It's talking about leadership things and topics that are, I don't want to let it pass by and it offers me a chance to kind of marinate my own thoughts and provide you my unique take at what that means. So as I've progressed in my career, um, you know, there's it kind of shifts a little bit, right? When you're a lieutenant or a, a junior enlisted, you're seeking mentorship a lot and um, um, trying to figure out how you can navigate in the world. And then as you progress in your career, you start to become the mentor as opposed to the mentee. But it never really stopped. You never stop being a mentee. I still ask for advice from my peers and my former supervisors and commanders because I just think it's important. I mean, every single day that I move into something is something new and maybe I haven't encountered that before. And uh, I, so I, I, but I've also been getting um, a little bit more contacts as far as being a mentor, even like cold calls. I think people who listen to this show or they just kind of vibe with what um, kind of how I represent myself as a leader and uh, um, my personality, they'll just kind of cold call me like, hey, sir, I'm wondering if you can have a chat. And I'm like, sure. Like, how do we know each other? Like, oh, we don't. We never worked with each other. I just saw your content. And so I'll, I've done Zoom calls. I've done telephone calls. We've did some record reviews, helps um, give some inputs on OPRs and EPRs. Happy to do that. And I'm very, very uh, thankful that uh, people who reach out to me trust me enough that they're looking for advice for me. And then I um, will give them their honest advice and then hopefully wish them the best and always ask to be kept in contact down the road just to see how the story, their individual story plays out. But yeah, a good mentor hopes you move on and a great mentor knows you will. So a couple points that I want to talk about this. Part of that as far as being a good mentor is understanding someone's goals and then developing a plan with them to achieve those goals. And I think those are the kind of things that like you have to, and I was fortunate enough to have a lot of supervisors who kind of sat me down and gave me like um, timelines and goals. They had kind of understood exactly where I was in my part of my career and told me about like the next 12, 24 months, the things that I need to focus on, and then potentially some opportunities a little bit further down the road that I should be kind of, um, this is like assuming I don't 
screw it up now. Here's the things down the road that you really uh, potentially can set up you as an opportunity to get you to the next level. Understanding my goals has always been to be a squadron commander and then now a group commander, still an active goal for me. I haven't necessarily thought about, do I want to be, I mean, I would love to be a wing commander, but I, I got to survive group command first. So first is getting pick of group command. That's a near term goal for me. And I've spoken with a lot of uh, peers and mentors just to make sure that yeah, what are my chances of getting there? But part of that is actually just sitting down with a with an individual and actually mapping it all out. And sometimes I think that ends up getting lost to some people. It's a um, it's a technique that's not that hard. I actually think that like some of the airmen, um, um, well, I forget what they're called, but like the, the peer evaluation kind of stuff, they get all fancy with these things, but like really um, you just need to have like a simple sort of product that you can kind of plug in some key dates and your rank and stuff like that. So on the 17X side, we have a, a it's called a ribbon chart. And so somebody, some smart nerd out there created this product. This is Adobe PDF. You plug in your your year group and your rank, and then it just populates like a timeline. And it, it, it exactly populates the timelines of your schools and your promotion boards and when you're actually going to meet at everyone and then below that it has like one row for vectors so it talks about like what kind of jobs that are probably going to be right for you so maybe it's like if you're a young cgo you want to try and get to a flight commander trending towards do if you're a full grade officer do trending to squadron commander so on and so forth and then underneath that there's smaller components with talks about tell me about your education tell me about your cyber training have you been deployed what are some of your key awards what are the um uh if you have certs or some kind of uh, joint qualifications they're just certain boxes that like when you look at the ribbon chart and the more green you see that's filled up as you progress through the career the, probably the better chances you have of actually kind of uh, achieving some of the goals that you're writing down and then at the very bottom, it talks about like your push lines on your OPRs, and it kind of helps you understand the story of what is current, your last, uh, what is the trending kind of thoughts for you as a leader, and what are the potentials for you upcoming, right? So in other words, like if you have a push line, if it's not saying trending to squadron command, maybe it's trending to DO instead, and that's okay. Right now, that's going to be a thing of, okay, so now I understand and I have a good snapshot of where you're looking at. I don't have to look at all of your records. This ends up becoming kind of encapsulating that. So by putting that in and talking with the person to be like, yep, these are my goals. I want to achieve this or that. And then you can have some context and probably some measurable things that a person can do to make sure they can actually go towards those goals. That's just mentorship 101, understanding what someone's goals are and helping them achieve, find a path in order to get towards those goals. And so if you haven't seen a ribbon chart, if you want to see the, the 17X one, you can re, uh, hit me up in the gal or through con contentelevation.co. I'll show you that. But it's a really easy and smart way. Um, whoever developed that is a genius. And I really think it helped. It helped me a lot understand, oh, I'm meeting my board now, or this is my second shot or whatever it is. And so highly recommend those things. Um, and it has to be up more than likely. I'll have to be updated anyway, because we're going to um, Scott's for all the officers. Uh, item number two is just being brutally honest. This is the part that like, I think also separates um, good and great mentors. The good ones are going to be are love to talk about just the good news, good news, good news, good news, and helping them achieve like, yeah, so you just want to be almost like a cheerleader versus a really good mentor who also needs to be like, hey, we need to have a come to Jesus meeting. We need to sit down and say, you screw that up, or we need you to dial in this, or just giving them honest feedback. Because if that mentor is not giving them the feedback in order to um, to get pointed in the right direction, I would say they're almost complicit in them sort of failing. You're, you're failing your job as a mentor because you're not helping adjust fire of your mentee. And so that, that skill set is very, very difficult for some people. Um, having honest conversations, having to be the bad guy, even though you're not the bad guy, you're, you're, you're a good teammate. I would argue that you're trying to make sure that you're checking six for someone that you care about. So you make sure giving that that uh, um, important feedback. Timing and tempo is always going to be important as well. But being brutally honest, it doesn't mean you need to go in there and like knife hand them or just shit on them. The idea is you have to be honest and a good mentor will make sure you do that. Um, I've had good mentors pull me in the office and give me that feedback. At certain points, I didn't want to hear those things, but I know it helped me grow as a leader. And so it's it's easier to look back on it when you when it happens. So I'm thankful for those uh, those moments, but I know that when it comes, when I'm giving those opportunities where I have to say something, I, I make sure I say something. I always do it in, you know, in privacy or in, in the right form of communication, but I don't pass up those opportunities to kind of give feedback. And I, I tell people all the time, like my filter has kind of eroded for a long time in the Air Force. And so for lots of different reasons, but this is a good reason my filter, I'm not going to hold myself back by giving somebody feedback, I think, uh, to someone who needs some adjustments to to 
achieve greater success. Number three is uh, letting people fail because that's how they're going to learn. And so like there is a, my, <laughs> this is not a funny story actually. So when my daughter was younger, um, she, we bought her like a, a, you know, a little bicycle, right? With the training wheels. And I was a proud dad with a camera and I'm like, I'm on videotaping. I was like, yeah, baby. So you could totally know how to ride it because she was spinning, you know, running circles around in a tricycle. So I was like, surely a bicycle with a um, uh, training wheel should be really good at. So she got on it and she just couldn't do it. Either her legs weren't strong enough. I don't think the bike was not sized for her, but like, I was like, what are you doing? Just go. And then she's like, well, I'm trying. And I, this is a, I am a terrible, this is like one of the worst parent videos ever. She's like, well, I'm, I'm trying dad. I'm like, well, just go. And I kick her, I kick the back of, not kick her. I kick like the bike to kind of, she's like, oh. And she kind of goes, she's like, oh, I'm doing it. And then she stops. I'm like, why'd you stop? You have to keep on going. And she's like, she is actually trying like a lot. And I am the overbearing dad who's just disappointed because she's not doing better. It is one of the the worst home videos that we have. And I, I cringe about it when I think about it because I wasn't really letting her fail. I was just not, I was just being disappointed because she wasn't performing that I want to. So I tell that story. I think I'm just telling you that story because this is a shady story and I feel really bad about it. So I want to be publicly, I want to publicly acknowledge that I love my daughter and I'm very sorry that I made her do that. Failing though. Okay. So this is probably the near term, you know, we have uh, right now, um, there's at least a week at minimum, a weekly opportunity where I can go brief a two or three star. And usually I have all my crap together. And for the most part, I make sure I have my crap together. And then I go and I, I'm ready to be the briefing. However, there are certain opportunities where like, hey, so depending on the context, I may let the action officer do it because I think this is good grooming. A lot of it could be a field grade officer or a mid-level civilian. It's like, no, 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 this is really good because you're getting practice at a high level. Yet I understand the audience and the subject matter is not that kind of a high stakes conversation. So I understand this is almost like a JV game versus a varsity game. The two or three stars still at the table, but like, I want you to get practice. And so I've gone there and I've actually had to go tell my bosses, some 06s and be like, hey, so I'm letting such and such brief. I need you to just let it go. They're like, well, are they ready? I'm like, they will be ready enough, but I'm purposefully making sure I want to put them in the front because I want them to get this experience and this is more important. I will always do the follow-up and just in case the general or whoever has some questions, I'm going to do all that work, but I need you to be cool about it and let this kind of ride. And generally they're probably nervous about it, but they feel more comfortable that I'm there as well. And so for the most part, it's worked because I've given that I, I've made those opportunities for myself. I've asked, sir, I want to brief the four star. I want to take this project on. This is a high vis thing. I'm raising my hand for it. Please let me do it. And luckily I've had enough opportunities. And so nobody has failed. Normally it's very rare. You do anything anymore. If that's a single point of failure, you're going to have smart people all around you, people who want you to succeed. So then you just should have confidence that you're probably not going to fail. But if you fail, fail is a really strong word. I think it's just like you made some mistakes and now you need to keep on going forward. And so a good mentor is going to recognize those opportunities and kind of push you into doing something you don't really want to do. Like I got, I got, I had a mentor, uh, Volan told me that uh, a wing commander, Volan told me that like, Hey, you're going to be the SecAf um, uh, project, SecAf visit projo. I'm like, so, uh, didn't raise my hand for that. Like noted, you're so good to do it. Like, okay, that's fine. I wasn't really worried about it. It's just, it's work, but like, and I wasn't going to fail because I had a protocol officer. I had other action officers. I have everybody else who's done these visits before. So I know I couldn't fail. So that just gave me confidence to kind of keep on going. And so that's letting people fail, but then also being there to kind of help pick up the pieces and realize that it's not really a fail. It's just a learning experience. That's probably going to be my third and final um, uh, talking point for this week's uh, theme about uh, a good mentor hopes you move on and a great mentor knows you will. We're going through a lot of transitions here at JFHU Doden, where a lot of uh, civilian, our civilian team is moving on to bigger and better things. And I'm, I'm happy for them. They actually have the opportunity to go and look for other jobs, unlike me, you know, and the military people where we, we have to serve our tour and then we wait for the next one. Um, or we choose to pull chocks and, and move into the civilian life. But uh, I, I try and be good mentors and help them transition out because I just think that like, I'm going to thank anybody for their service, even if they're in, in, in the military or otherwise. Uh, if you're part of this team for so many months or so many years, 
I'm happy for any kind of transition thing. Um, would would I like some of them to have stayed on board to help us kind of cover down on our projects? Of course, but I'm never going to hold somebody else's project down because or progress down because we'll be able to get by. We're hiring new people and um, we'll get the right talent here even through the summer PCS season. Uh, uh, I believe all the teams overall are going to balance out and because that's just what we do. We, we make things work. We figure it out. Um, so very, very proud to be where I'm at. So if you're out there being, uh, if you're actively being a mentor, really, really think about some of the things I talked, uh, I've talked about, right? Understanding someone's goals, developing plans to achieve them, being brutally honest, and then potentially letting people fail and let them know that you just learn from this thing. It's not a, it's not a win or lose, it's win or learn. So that being said, uh, like I said, I'm going over to Virginia next week, so I may or may not record an episode next week. It's a game time decision. Depends on if I have enough time when I come back and the house is actually still here because our kids are going to be alone. But uh, I'm confident they're going to be responsible or they will feel the wrath. As long as they take care of Sally, that's all that matters. And my comic books and all my nerdery stuff. Um, then we're going to be okay. So you guys take care of yourselves. I will talk to you either next week or the following week. Peace.